great pleasure to introduce you to Dar Shannon. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Welcome to the country. You've literally only been here a few days, a few hours. Uh, a few you? hours, yeah. yeah. I, just, I got in about four o'clock. Mm. Mm. Let's go back, first of all, Dar, because I, I, I'm sure you must have answered this question many times, but I, I'm very interested to know how Runaway first got recorded. Well, let's see, I was working in Battle Creek, Michigan, at a milk bar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, a black fella, a disc jockey, came down to hear us. And I told him he better come in the afternoon, because at night they may not they might hang him or something. So he did. He came down on a Saturday afternoon, and in about two weeks he took the tape of Runaway to, to New York. And they called me up, and I went, and we, and we cut it. I had to drive to New York from Detroit. Or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we drove, and uh, it was about 10 degrees below zero, and our heater broke. The muffler fell off. <laughs> we nearly really didn't make it, you know. And we cut that and Jody, the B-side, in an hour and a half, and then we split it. With Max a millionaire and Max Crook who uh, uh, played the musitron on it. Mm. It's that weird instrument in the middle. Mm. And he and he uh, cut an hour and a half also. So we did it all in three hours, four songs. Yeah. Were you surprised because it was you, that was your first record? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. You know, I, I said, yeah, I couldn't cut it. Who do I care? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know really. No, I don't think anyone really knew. You know, I think more uh, after you've been in the business a while, you know what can be a hit possibly and what cannot be. Mm. Mm. But that's how we uh, came about doing it. How did you feel about uh, the onslaught of the Beatles in that sense? Oh, that I kind of, loved cause, it. Because you did a cover of From Me to You at one stage, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, we were doing a show together, the Beatles and I, at uh, Albert Hall. Mm. And I heard that song. And they had a little falsetto, so I said to John, I think, I think I'll go record that. He said, oh, it's a big cry, it's a big bloody cry. He walked up the stairs and he said, now wait a minute. Like that, you know, because they hadn't been in America or anything. But my manager finally decided to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Didn't hurt them much. I, don't think. <laughs> I was really glad they came along. You know, it expanded the business. It just mm. engulfed it all. It's uh, yeah, I really. Was so what 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 stage did you take? What direction did you take at that point of time? I went into produ production. Mm. Working was. Yeah, I had a group called Smith, mm. and they had a top ten uh, million seller, and, and they also had a top ten album. Then I went on to Gypsy Woman with Brian Highland. Mm. There were none of them hits here. There were big hits in America. Mm. Did and now you I just recorded a, a live album in Manchester in December. That's right. Yeah. And that was really fun. I wasn't I wasn't going to do it. I was kind of afraid to do it. I said, Nah, that's kind of old, old, you know. But it was so much fun that I just went and did it anyway. Mm. And so I think it's the best album I ever did. I'm not really here to hype that. <laughs> Because Neil Sadaka was out. Neil Sadaka was on Whistle Test in, in that chair not too long ago, and I'm going to ask you the same question I asked him because I, I was very interested. A lot of your contemporaries, Dion DiMucci and Carole King, and one or two of the others, moved into a sort of different area of music. Were you? <coughs> did you feel inclined to do that yourself? Oh sure. Did you, Did you try it? I tried it, but I just tried it by myself. Uh, I would sit in my office and do it, mm. and I'd record it on tape, and it just uh, wasn't there yet. It may never be there, but I think it will be. Mm. I just don't know. I'm just having so much fun, you know, I don't care. Mm. I know I'm very patient. I used to be very unpatient. Now I take my time, I just do what comes. Because mm. life is kind of short, you know, and I'm having a lot of fun. Are you still writing as much as yeah, you used to I do? Yeah, I write. Mm. But I don't get too involved in the business as far as I gotta have a hit, man, you know. I, I, it used to hang me up, and I never saw England in my whole life. When I used to come here, I'd just tour, and I'd sit in a bus, and I'd pick. Mm. I'd pick so much, I, my hands nearly bleed, you know. I said, this is crazy. And about four years ago, I said, no, man, I want to go see England this time. I'm really going to see it. And the last tour over here, I'd get up at nine, I'd see the castles. And I, you know, it was a change, a great change in life for me. Mm. I love records, you know, I love the record business. But I also love life even better. How long are you going to be here this time, Doug? I'll be here three months. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to Spain this time, bringing my family, I'm bringing everybody, my mother, and my kids, and my wife, everybody. Mm. And really freaking out. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to go to Spain and Italy, and I'll be working here. I'll be working you know, all over Liverpool, and Manchester, and mm. you know, God, everywhere. Any more recording coming up in the near future? Yeah, I might when I get back. Mm. No, I might here. What about production plans, Dal? Any, any more plans for production? Yeah, I was going to go back and produce Gail McCormick of The Smith. Mm. I think she's an incredible, talented girl, but she gets confused at times and signs papers, and they're usually contracts. <laughs> tie you up. Yeah. So uh, I was already to to do her. Then she told me, but she said, "Also, I have this this little paper here. I don't, what does that mean?" I said, 
that means you are tied up for a few years. Come back in a couple of years. She's really a talented girl. Mm -hmm. I would love to cut her again. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just, I'm very choosy. I was producing just before I come over. And uh, he was a kid about 17. And he didn't know. You know, when you're 17, you don't know. So I understood, and I just said, I'm going to have to walk out of this project, and, and I'll see you in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. He has a lot to learn. Not that I know everything. But I'm just getting older, you know, and just, I see a lot of things now. I see a lot of things in him that I saw in myself. And uh, I guess I had some patient producers working with me. Mm -hmm. I won't go through it. <laughs> if it isn't fun, it's not music to me anymore. I right. won't do it. Darshan, thank you very thank much. Thank you very indeed. much, Bob.